We are in Las Vegas, Nevada, playing poker at the Win Poker Room. My plan for this session is to play some stress-free 2-5 No Limit, have some fun, and also drink as much free alcohol as I can while still being able to read the cards. Well, things get pretty crazy as this vlog goes on. Hope you guys enjoy this one. First hand here, I've got pocket queens. There's a button straddle to 10, a raise to 50. I three bet to 160. My opponent has about $1,500 in his stack and he makes the call. So we're going heads up here in position. First flop, pocket queens, three bet pot. Flop comes out 10 high. Good if he has a hand like pocket jacks or ace king. Bad if he has pocket tens. I'm not gonna slow down. I bet $100 on this flop. And I get check raised to 400 bucks. I look back over at my opponent's stack. It looks like he's got about 800 or 900 behind. I think about just jamming all in here. But if he's got a 10, I want to allow him to keep betting on the turn. If he's got pocket jacks, I don't want to scare him away. I decide to put in four black chips for a call. It is possible we're beat here by two pair or a set. But when the turn pairs the board, this definitely reduces the combos that he can have. And when he shoves all in, I just make the snap call here. We're running out the board one time. The river's a deuce. And he says, pocket queens. And I go, I got pocket queens. And we end up chopping this one up. I was a little bit nervous there that I was up against a set or kings, so I would say this is somewhat of a win-win here. I try to play as big as possible as I can while I'm out here in Vegas, but I'm not going to lie, I was feeling a little bit burnt out tonight. I just played a big live stream in Texas, big games in Florida. I just played a big game the night before at the Aria, and I just wanted to relax and play some nice stress-free 2-5 No Limit. My first drink here is a chilled fireball shot. Brings me back to college days at West Virginia University, and I got myself an IPA as well. With a little bit of alcohol in the system, there's a raise to 15 and 2 calls. I squeeze Ace Jack suited here and the big blind to 100 bucks. I get two callers and flop second pair on a king high board. I put out a C bet, initial raiser folds, but the hijack player makes the call. The dealer collects the chips and puts out the ace of clubs on the turn, giving us two pair now. I could bet or check. Given the fact that this opponent was very aggressive, I decide to slow down and check, maybe giving him some rope to bluff, but he decides to check back. River card seven of clubs. I think a lot of the time here, he's just going to have a king or really nothing at all. So I put out a 125 small thin value bet here and it gets paid off. We show the two pair and it's good. With the first round of drinks down the hatch, I start getting out of line here pre-flop, raising nine six of diamonds to $40. Button calls 40, big blind calls 40, and straddle calls 40. Four ways to an ace, 10, eight, two club board. I flop a gut shot, really not too much else working here for me. The big blind leads out for $60 and she was a tighter, older woman. Feel like I could definitely call here, potentially bluff later on. She's probably just capped to a medium ace in this situation. So I make the call for $60 and now the button bumps it up to 150 bucks. The big blind calls and I'm getting a pretty good price. I could potentially bluff later on depending on the run out. So I make the call for $90 more. Turn card three of diamonds shouldn't change anyone's hand here. Big blind checks, I check, and now the button slows down and checks behind, which I don't think he's ever doing with two pair or set. And when the river cards, the deuce of spades and the big blind checks again, I feel like this is just a mandatory bluff spot for me. If the big blind had a very strong hand, she might put in another raise in the flop or definitely a bet here on the river. Once the button doesn't bet the turn after raising the flop, he's pretty much capped as well. I feel like I could definitely have some strong hands on this board, some river two pairs, some turn two pairs, or just an ace king, ace queen hand. So I put out a $500 river bluff here with nine high into two people, hoping this will look super strong, trying to get someone to fold out a medium ace. The button folds very quickly, but the big blind goes into the tank. Oh. 
Not gonna lie, I did not think that bluff was going to work, but I had to try anyway, right? I can't just check and give up with nine high, but it did work. Both of my opponents fold. We take this one down. I then move on to my third drink of the evening. Switch it up here with a shock top. Not the worst beer, not the best beer. And then I get into an interesting spot with queen jack offsuit. I raised the 35 over a straddle. The button calls 35 and the big blind calls 35. Three ways to the flop. 7-4 deuce rainbow I completely miss. Straddle checks. I slow down here and check over to the button who puts out a $60 bet. And this particular player on the button just raised last hand and then folded on the river. He'd been pretty action so far. I feel like he could be stabbing here with a wide range of hands. And once the straddle calls 60, I feel like this could be a spot... I could put in a raise. Neither of my opponents should have too strong of a hand on this board and the board texture should change a lot by the river. So I decide to attack this weakness and put in a raise to $200, a complete air ball bluff back over to the button who bet the flop and he very quickly folds, which doesn't surprise me at all. But now the straddle goes into the tank and eventually he makes the call for 200. So we're heads up here in position and the turn card's a queen giving me top pair. Once the under the gun player calls twice on the flop, I feel like he's gonna have a lot of single pair hands, maybe some straight draws like five, six. I could check back and pot control here, but if I was bluffing on the flop with a hand like five, six, ace, five, or ace, three, I would wanna continue on this turn card trying to put a lot of pressure on his one pair hands as well. So when I do actually make a pair, I have to balance that out as well by betting when I actually have it. Hoping that maybe he'll get curious here with a 7x hand. Think maybe I'm bluffing with a hand like pocket 8s. And he'll make the call. If he does make the call, I'll probably just be checking back most river cards. But it doesn't come to that. He eventually folds and we get the money. I'm definitely starting to get out of line here as the drinks are flowing. I'm V-pipping probably 70 or 80 percent, raising a lot of hands, playing a lot of hands as well. Definitely having some fun here at the win. Is good beer? Ah, it's okay, whatever. You want to try a sip or something? <laughs> Check. Check. Alright. Four players. We have now reached peak punt mode here. Raising blind under the gun. There's a small blind re-raise to $100. Back over to me with 10-6 offsuit. I mean, you can make a straight with this hand, so I decide to defend. I got it. Hundred? One hundred. I really got it now. Flopping top pair with the 10-6 offsuit isn't bad, but turning two pair with the 10-6 offsuit is pretty amazing. My opponent bets a big sizing of $350. I feel like a lot of the time he's just going to be bluffing here. It is possible he could have a big over pair. But that big overpair is never going to be slowing down on the river. I'm also not sure if my opponent saw me raise blind or just thought that I raised under the gun to $35. So I'm not sure if he's trying to just play me here thinking that I've got a blind hand. Thinking I'll just fold out any pair. I decide to keep his bluffs in here and call $350. I want to allow him to keep blasting off if he is. And the river card is the queen of clubs. I assume he's going to be slowing down and checking here with hands like pocket jacks or a 10x hand, but he does not check over to me. He fires out a triple barrel of 750 bucks. 750. You good? You there? I tried to tell you. Oh. Thank you. 
versus that sizing here by my opponent, I decided to just snap call on the river with two pair. I mean, it is kind of hard to get called by a worse hand if we jam all in, and we end up picking off a bluff. My opponent showed what looked like ace high, but I can't really remember. Our stack is up over $3,000 now from a $1,500 buy-in. A couple drinks in, maybe I should raise blind more often. In this hand, there's a straddle, a raise to 40, and the cutoff by a very tight player. I call on the button with king queen offsuit and the straddler makes the call as well. Three ways to king six five rainbow. Cut off c bet small on this board, $40. I think the standard line here would just be to call this $40, but with a straddle player behind me and thinking that the cutoff could be c betting here with basically 100% of his range, I decide to raise it up here. Kind of an old school raise to see where you're at. I make it $125. Straddler makes to fold but the cutoff player makes the call. Turn card jack of clubs, now king jack gets there, pocket jacks get there, he checks to me. I slow down in pocket control and check this one back. The final card here is the deuce of clubs. A backdoor flush gets there, the action is over here on this tight player and the cutoff hasn't played many hands all night and he decides to lead into me now for 325 bucks. Yuck. 325. Ugh. Man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not a fun spot to be in versus this player type. I just can't really find any bluffs that he could have here. Maybe 7-8 for a busted straight draw. Maybe he's turning a smaller pocket pair into a bluff. He would never be betting the sizing with king-9 or king-10. He could have aces, ace-king, a flush, pocket jacks, king-jack. Just don't think we're going to win here very often. I don't want to give this guy action, so I fold and decide to get myself two more drinks. We are moving, we are grooving along here. In this hand, I didn't get the pre-flop action, but basically there was a couple limps for $5. I have King Jack offsuit and I squeeze and the big blind to $50. A limper goes all in for 275 bucks. I make the call with King Jack offsuit. He shows pocket tens. It is a classic flip. And as you can see, there's a king in the window. Oh! Oh! oh. Wow. Oh, I had a pull. <laughs> Do I have to pay? <laughs> I flop top two pair on a king jack board. The turn is safe, but the river is a 10, and we end up losing here. Set versus two pair for around a $550 pot. <laughs> I'm on tilt now. Instead of being up $2,000, I'm only up $1,800. Gotta get it back in this hand. 8-4 suited on the button. I raised to $30. I get 3-bet by the small blind to $60. All right, min raise. I make the call. King 8, 3 board, flopping second pair. My opponent bets 10 bucks. I call. Turn 7, he bets 30 bucks. I call again. River deuce, he checks. I check back. He shows ace, queen, and eight is good. After playing some shitty hands, I finally pick up a pretty hand, queen, jack of clubs. There's a raise to 15, a call for 15. I squeeze in the small blind to $75. Initial raiser makes the call, and the hijack makes the call. Three ways, three bet pot, ace, seven, three, two clubs. Pretty good board for queen, jack of clubs. I mean, we didn't flop a pair. But we do have a flush draw on an ace side board. I can represent aces, ace king, ace queen. I bet out $100. Only the initial raiser makes the call. So now we're heads up out of position to a board pairing seven. I slow down and check, which is what I would do here with some weaker aces, some flush draws, some under pairs, and my total air balls that I'm giving up on. 
My opponent does not give up when she bets $300. I think it's pretty clear here that she's got an ace high hand, possibly even a 7x hand, given the fact that I have a flush draw. I block a lot of flush draws that she can have. I don't think she's bluffing here. I don't think a raise would make any sense, but I am getting a pretty decent price here to call trying to hit a club, and I'm a couple drinks in. Let's try to get lucky. I throw in three black chips looking for a black card on the river, but we do not get it. It's the three of diamonds. I'm stuck here with queen high. I check over to my opponent, and she does not slow down an $800 bet from her. That's enough to get this one through. I fold my queen high. It's getting later now around 2 or 2.30 a.m., but this game is still good. We're not stopping yet. I order myself another round of drinks, a green tea shot, a shock top, leading into the last hand of the night where there's two calls for $5, a button raised to $35, and I peel back a beautiful ace jack of clubs. Now, I've been playing some shit hands all night, so ace jack of clubs to me looks like aces, and to be honest, I maybe thought I had aces at this point, probably about six or seven drinks in. I three bet up here to $150. One limper folds, but the other limper makes to call, and the button initial raiser makes to fold. A very interesting spot here where a limper makes to call, initial raiser folds, the limper has around $300 in his stack. When we see an eight high board, he's got 300 bucks. The pot's over 300 bucks. I could check and give up or I could put max pressure on him and I decide to just put him all in. If he has an overpair to the board, I guess he's just gonna get a double up. But I feel like a lot of the time he's gonna have Broadway cards, ace high hands, maybe smaller pocket pairs. He goes into the tank now forever. Like literally two minutes of thinking, I'm basically falling asleep. I mean, I maybe did fall asleep during this tank, and eventually he calls, turns a nine, rivers an eight. I show ace high, and he shows pocket tens. Jesus, what a nit roll there, buddy. Well, we double this guy up, and this ends up being the last hand of the night. The table breaks after this. I end up racking up my chips, staggering over to the cage, and cashing out for the night. Even after playing like a complete maniac, I still profited over $600. While I was leaving the poker room, I actually met up with a couple spring breakers that were here from LA, and we decided to go play some high stakes blackjack. Things were going great at first. I was up thousands of dollars, and then, yeah, uh, we're not gonna talk about the final outcome there. Wasn't too good for me. I decide to call tonight, finally walk myself home. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Until next time, I'll see ya.